Hi, Derek Mousy here. Uh, welcome and thanks for thanks for watching. Um, today I'm going to be talking about a book that I recently finished called Why Hospitals Fly, um, or Why Hospitals Should Fly by John Nance. Um, this was uh, an amazing book to read, one that I learned a lot from, and today I'm going to mostly focus on my takeaways from the book. Um, but just a quick recap of kind of what you're getting yourself into. Um, it's officially essentially a fictional book. Um, but it kind of spells out in a very fun and engaging way um, how healthcare is um, done right and health, how healthcare should be done right. Um, so, like I said, it's a great read and a fun book. I enjoyed reading it. Um, so, I'm just going to walk through my takeaways from this book um, one at a time, and they're pretty much in chronological, chronological order. And I'll just try to explain each one very quickly. Um, so, the first one was the idea of a seesaw model. And the seesaw model is the assumption that you are right 90% of the time, and uh, that you're right 90% of the time. So you can kind of see that it's essentially putting the fulcrum 90% um, down a plank. And 90% of the time, when you assume you're not right 90% of the time, it's easy to leverage that side. Um, but that 10% of the time where you are wrong, it's hard to hard to put yourself in that position um, in order to prevent error. So when you you use the seesaw. When the seesaw effect is in place, uh, you're more prone to error making because it's harder for you uh, to make the assumption that you can do something wrong. So another learning um, is the need to adopt a culture of catch and not prevent. Um, you know, obviously, you, a big thing in health here is trying to prevent errors. Um, you know, but one of, one of the uh, concepts in the book that kind of rang true to me is the idea that you can't prevent all errors. Um, so setting up a system where you're able to catch those errors before they reach the patient um, is essential. And so three, three basic tendencies that lead uh, to patient safety failure, and that's perception, assumption, and communication. Um, you know, nothing, nothing too profound here, and they all make uh, very good sense, but um, you know, keeping in mind that the way people perceive the communication or perceive something um, is different based on their experiences um, and what they're bringing to the situation. Assumptions can be lethal. You know, don't ever assume. Uh, we all know the saying about assumptions. And then communication. Uh, obviously, in just about everything that we do, communication is key. Um, and healthcare is no exception. Um, okay, uh, one was, uh, and then. I can't remember the exact concept, but I'll read kind of the example that I wrote down. That when you make a surgical make mistake that is easy to fix but unknown, the next uh, everyone knows about is National Network Community for Errors. Why not? Um, it's basically when we make these corrections um, that can save lives and, and prevent things from happening, they usually end up staying in your hospital or in your kind of geographic location. Um, so, you know, the issue is why isn't there an easy way to share these? Uh, nationwide um, to prevent errors uh, across all organizations. Uh, another key point was uh, that you need to personalize examples to help uh, drive home a point and keep the focus clear. Uh, you know, they used very specific, uh, when they talked about patient um, errors or patient safety you know, breaches and times that they harmed the patient. They made it very detailed descriptions of the patient. You know, they, they used the name, they used description of the patient, they talked about their family members. And I think that's key to really, um, you know, personalize those errors, uh, to really bring them close to home and, and drive home the importance of keeping people safe. Um, um, using the classic family analogy, would you, would you do this to your child, as simple as it may be, um, can be helpful. The tactic of recording ourselves while we're doing, um, you know, certain things. They were talking about recording themselves in the operating room and how much they could learn and how much they did learn um, by being able to just watch themselves do what they do day in and day out. When they could see that from that third person, third person perspective, um, they were able to quick, uh, make some easy and quick fixes that uh, have dramatic effects on patient safety. Um, don't give in to the halo effect. Be accountable. Uh, you know, nobody is perfect, uh, no human is infallible, uh, so keep that in mind, you know, just because you're questioning something, somebody doesn't mean you're, you know, personally attacking them, and it's important that we do so in a way that's not attacking, 
Um, people make mistakes, and it's important to work as a team uh, to minimize the impact of those mistakes. And you really have to be willing to sacrifice uh, you know, this is, I think, is easier said than done. You really have to be willing to sacrifice time and money to align your physicians. Uh, this is something I don't see uh, as much as I think I, it needs to be seen across organizations. Uh, you know, there's always, what can we do to get our physicians engaged? What can we do to teach our physicians, you know, without affecting their patient schedule? And I think you really have to come to the realization that uh, you, you it's worth it. You're going to have to affect the patient schedule. You may have to block off a half a day and lose a half a day's revenue if it's, you know, in the big picture, getting people on board and aligned with the organization. Uh, because overall, having an aligned physician staff is going to save you far more money than, uh, you know, canceling a half a day every every quarter. Uh, the tier is to minimize errors. So it's kind of that stepwise approach to preventing errors. And the first tier is systematically reduce the incidence of human mistakes. So that's your, you're designing your processes um, such that uh, they, they focus on not making errors. You know, you, you design processes that are simple, that are um, not relying on the individual, but it's a system that, um, you know, you kind of pull through, um, you pull through in order to prevent uh, individual errors. So the second tier is... Um, Build a system to anticipate and build buffers to catch errors. So not only do you kind of try to build a system that uh, eradicates errors, but you still recognize that errors can happen. You try to identify those areas where you can't completely make it a you know a standalone process, but there is some um, you know some human input that leads to potential for variance and errors. So um, putting buffers in place there that can catch those errors before they reach the patient. And then third, after you minimize the risk and build the buffers, assume that 50% of the time you can still, you know, be wrong and cause an error. So if you, if you, um, you know, if you still approach it with the attitude that it needs to be double checked, mistakes happen, um, and that you know we can't assume that we're right, uh, those are kind of your best three tiers of preventing, preventing uh, patient harm. Uh, you know, another great idea was the fish, physician follow day, and it kind of goes back to the idea of taking time and money away to align your physicians. And um, the example they used was you know, the physician would follow around a nurse one, one hour per year, year. Um, you know, so just being able to remove them from their situation and let them kind of learn from each other, respect what their colleagues are doing, um, and go from there. I think it's just really, I can't say this enough, it's really important um, to intentionally align all of your staff regardless of um, you know, if it affects volume, you know, you, you can make up that volume and efficiencies and engage from that alignment, but you really have to be intentional and set time aside. Um, you know, if you can get them to agree to a weekend, that's great, but if not, you have to still do a set time aside um, to do some focus work with those groups. And then, quote about healthcare. I really like this quote about healthcare. I keep it, I think it's very relevant. It is very difficult to, to patch and rebuild a leaking ship while you're sailing it. Uh, I'm going to repeat that one more time just so I can be very clear. It's very difficult to patch and rebuild a ship while you're sailing it. And, uh, you know, I think this fits perfectly in healthcare. You know, we, we I think if you ask any, uh, I guess, any an individual that is a, a familiar and works um, intimately with healthcare, and they'll say, yes, our system is broken. Yes, it needs um, room for large scale improvement. But that's great, and we'll continue to work on that. But we still have patients to see. We've still got a hospital to run. Um, so it's kind of an interesting, um, interesting dilemma. And I think that quote sums it up very well. That you know we're trying to correct the system at the same time as we still have to have throughput and be helping those patients. Uh, one more example: If a pilot needed a hundred thousand um, gallons of fuel to make it to their next destination, and the CFO of that organization said. You get sixty thousand, which you make. So make it work. Would you want to get on the airline? No, obviously, um, you know that's not, and that's kind of how the current staffing model is. Is we're we're giving them, uh, you know, less and less human capital and resources, and giving actually putting more and more responsibilities on their plate. And we're saying get it done, um, and you know we expect it to be effective and air air free, and it's really you can't look at that look at it that way. You've got to kind of build from the ground up and say this is. Uh, how many patients we've got, this is the staff that we need to support them. Um, 
And then you start to try to minimize those costs and maximize that efficiency. <coughs> Look at the ways to incorporate visual clues uh, to, include, to uh, increase safety. Just another part of that tier one of building your processes um, to reduce errors and visual cues are a, are a great way uh, to do that. An example they used was when any time a nurse was dealing with medications, she would throw a red uh, towel over her shoulder and that would indicate to other nurses, please don't interrupt me at this moment because I'm dealing with the, the medications and if I, you know, if you have an error in medication, you can cause serious harm. So I, I thought that was a great um, idea and, and um, also putting pedometers on nurses. Uh, to measure waste, uh, just using, just think about different ways that we can capture the data you're trying to capture, prove the point you're trying to prove um, without spending a lot of money. So as I said, those are the notes I had. Uh, highly recommend um, this book, Why Hospitals Should Fly by John Nance. Um, probably one of the best, if not the best, uh, healthcare book I think I've read to date. Um, just really enjoyed it. It's a fun read, uh, but also provides some really valuable uh, inside some material for you. So check it out. Um, thanks and have a great uh, day and rest of your weekend.